The policeman is a useful public servant. He wears a uniform. He maintains law and order. He arrests the lawbreakers and produces them before the court of justice. He safeguards the rights of the people. He raids where the violators of law are hiding. He chases and arrests the culprits. The policeman also controls traffic on roads. A policeman's duty is very hard. He risks chasing the dangerous offenders. He is brave, courageous and daring fellow. He is honest and dutiful. However there are also some black sheep in the police department. They take bribe and work dishonestly. They are corrupt and evil-minded. They cause bad name to the police department. However the honest and dutiful policemen are great public servants. The postman is a useful public servant. He is an honest and dutiful person. He brings mail house to house and street to street. He also brings money orders and postal gifts to the people. Mr. Rehat Ali is a postman. He is a simple person. He gets up early in the morning and goes to the post office. He sorts out the mail and goes house to house. He delivers the mail to correct recipients. He lives a simple life. He does his duty all the day long. After he has distributed the mail he goes to the post boxes and collects the mail. Then he goes back to the post office and deposits the mail with the post office. He is content with his earning. Although his children do not go to good schools, they do not eat good food, they do not live in good house, yet he is content with his life. What he cares the most is the honesty of the purpose. He is a respectable and honorable fellow. One day, a crow was very thirsty. It went here and there in search of water. But it could find water nowhere. At last it found a pitcher lying in a garden. It tried to drink water but its beak could not reach it. The water in the pitcher was very low. The crow was wise. It picked small pebbles lying close to the pitcher one by one and dropped them into it. Owing to its efforts the water in the pitcher rose bit by bit. When water had risen to the extent that its beak could reach it, it drank it to the fill and flew away happily. One day, three friends went on a journey. They promised that they would help one another in the hour of need. In the way there was a thick forest. They had to pass through it. Suddenly one of them caught the sight of a purse lying under a shady tree. The other two also came to know about it. When they opened the purse their happiness knew no bounds. It was filled with gold coins. The three friends decided to distribute the gold among themselves equally. But they were also hungry. They sent one of them to the nearest village to bring food. When one of them had left the other two planned to kill him at his arrival back. They wanted to guzzle the gold themselves, on the other hand, the one who had gone to bring food was also a greedy man. He mixed poison in the food to kill the other two for being the sole owner of the gold. When he reached back the two killed him instantly and began to eat food. After eating the poison food they also died. The purse of gold lay there unoccupied. One day, a dog was very hungry. Hungry. He stole a piece of meat from a butcher's shop and ran off. In the way there was a stream. The dog ran on the bridge over the stream. By chance he looked at his reflection in the water. The foolish dog thought that it was another dog with a piece of meat in its mouth. The lust of greed overpowered him. He wanted to snatch that piece of meat too. For this purpose he opened his mouth and began to bark at his own reflection. But his own piece of meat also fell into the water. One day, a jackal came to a camel and said, Brother, there are fields of melons on the other bank of the river. Please carry me across the river on your back so that I may relish sweet melons. 
The camel agreed after he had been assured that there were also the fields of sugarcane there. Both of them reached the other side of the river. The jackal ate the melons to the fill. After it had finished it began to howl. The camel who was still eating sugar canes forbade him to do so for the villagers could come and punish them. But the jackal said, it is my habit to howl after eating something. After a little while the villagers approached there and beat the camel thoroughly. The jackal hid itself behind a bush. After the punishment when the camel came to the river bank the jackal requested, please carry me across the river. The camel decided to teach the jackal a lesson. When they were in the middle of the river, the camel sat. Inside the water. The jackal said, brother, why are you doing so? I may get drowned. The camel said, it is my habit to sit inside water. Saying. This he took a deep dive into the water and the foolish jackal was drowned. One day, a fox invited a crane to dinner. The crane was very happy to have received the fox's invitation. It reached the fox's house in time. When the time of dinner came, the fox served the broth to the crane in a flat dish. The long-beaked crane tried its best to sip the broth but could not do so because the dish was flat. It left the fox's home hungry. After a few days the crane invited the fox to dinner. The fox reached the crane's house on time. The crane served the broth in a narrow-necked vase. The fox tried his best, but his mouth could not enter the vase. It just licked it from outside. The fox too remained hungry. One day, a dove saw a bee going to the stream to drink water. It fell into it and soaked its wings. The dove plucked a leaf and flew to the drowning bee. It placed the leaf close to the bee on the surface of the water. The bee rode on it and was able to dry its wings. After a few minutes, it flew to safety. After a few days, a hunter came to the forest with a gun. He spotted the dove sitting on a branch of a tree. He aimed at the dove and was about to fire. The bee that had been helped by the dove was nearby. It flew fast and stung at the hunter's hand. The aim was missed and the dove flew away to safety. One day, a woodcutter was cutting a dead tree on the bank of a river. Suddenly his axe slipped from his hands and fell into the water. The poor woodcutter began to sob. He had no more axes. He felt very much grieved over the loss of his axe. Suddenly an angel appeared there. He asked why the old woodcutter was sad. The old man told the angel about the loss of his axe. The angel jumped into the water and came out with an axe of gold. The woodcutter refused to take the golden axe as it did not belong to him. The angel went underwater again and brought out a silver axe. The old man again refused to accept the silver axe. Third time, the angel brought out an iron axe. When the old man saw the iron axe he felt very happy. He at once accepted the iron axe. The angel was moved by his honesty. He gave him all the three axes as a reward. Once there lived many rabbits in a forest. They lived in harmony and peace. One day a fierce wolf came to that side. He began to hunt innocent rabbits one by one. The rabbits were much terrified by this cruel enemy. They wanted to get rid of him. They went to an old wise rabbit and asked what they should do. The wise rabbit said, there is a well in the forest. Cover it with leaves and straw. When the wolf comes, run at once to the side of the well. He may fall into it. They acted upon the old rabbit's advice and began to play near the well in a circle. The cruel wolf came and tried to hunt a rabbit. All the rabbits ran towards the well. The wolf tried to chase them and doing so he fell into the deep well. The principal, the Guft, Model School, Lahore. Sir, Madam, it is respectfully stated that I am suffering from fever. Therefore, I cannot come to school. Would you kindly grant me leave from April 6th to April 8th, 2011? I shall be grateful to you. Yours obediently, I'm a shortcut class, 7B, dated. 
to the principal, the Guft Model School, Karachi Sir, Madam, it is respectfully stated that I have an urgent piece of work at home. Therefore, I cannot come to school. Would you kindly grant me leave for today, the 7th of April 2014? I shall be highly thankful to you. Yours obediently, Hassan Shawkat Class, 7C, Date. 2. The Principal, the Guft Model School, Peshawar. Sir, Madam, it is respectfully stated that the marriage ceremony of my elder brother has been decided to take place on the 25th of this month. Therefore, I cannot come to school. Would you kindly grant me leave from the 25th of May to 28th May 2014? I shall be highly grateful to you. Yours obediently, Ahmed Shawkat Class, 7C, Date. 2. The Principal, the Guft Model School, Quetta. Sir, Madam, it is respectfully stated that my father has been transferred to Lahore. My family is now to move to Lahore. That is why I cannot come to school. Would you kindly issue me the school leaving certificate so that I can take admission to to a guffed school in Lahore. I shall be highly grateful to you. Yours obediently, AXA Shawkat Class, 7A, Date. 2. The Principal, the Guft Model School, Mazafarabad. Sir, Madam, it is respectfully stated that my father is a poor labourer. He has a large family. He hardly makes both ends meet. He cannot afford my study expenses. Would you kindly grant me 70% concession in the school fee? This concession will enable my father to afford my study expenses. By this way I shall be able to continue my studies. Yours obediently, Kamal Khan Class, 7B, Date. 2. The Principal, the Guft Model School, Okara. Sir, Madam, it is respectfully stated that I absented myself from school for a couple of days due to illness. I could not send application because there was nobody available for this purpose. During my absence I was fined 100 rupees. Would you please re- Emit the fine for my absence. I shall be Highly grateful to you. Yours obedient Hamza Essen Class 7A 8 Lahore, April 7, 2014 Dear Father, you will be glad to know that I have passed the 6th class examination. Now I have been promoted to Class 7. I need to buy new books and notebooks. I have also to pay my tuition fee. Please send me 10,000 rupees by money order. My salam to mother, sister, and brother. Yours affectionately, Hasib Nazir. Prince Road, Quetta, May 25, 2014. Dear mother, I received your letter yesterday. You seem to be much worried about me. I fell ill a few days ago. It was because of the change in the weather condition. My roommate took me to a doctor who checked up me and gave medicine. I took medicine and felt relieved. Now I am all right. You need not worry anymore. Say my salam to father and younger brother and sister. Your loving son, Hamza Essen. Wadat Colony, Lahore, June 15, 2014. Dear Jamal, you will be glad to know that I am going to celebrate my 14th birthday on the 25th of June. I have invited my cousins and friends to come to the party. I would like you two to be present on the occasion of my birthday party. The party will last a few hours. It will begin at 6 o'clock and conclude at 9 o'clock. Please do come to the party, we shall have a lot of fun. Pay my compliments to your father and mother. Yours truly. Jamal Ahmed. 
Awang Town, Lahore, August 15, 2014. Dear Anwar, how are you? I hope. that you must be all right. Health is great wealth. We know the worth of health when we are sick. A few days ago, my father fell seriously ill. He was. Hope that you must be all right. Health is great wealth. We know the worth of health when we are sick. A few days ago, my father fell seriously ill. He was. Hospitalized. By the grace of Allah his health is now improving. He is quickly recovering. I have to go to the hospital twice daily to carry food and other things of need. Please lend me your bicycle for a few days. I promise that I will handle it with care. Pay my salam to your father and mother. Yours truly Rehat Ali. Gulshan Iqbal, Lahore, November 10th, 2014. Dear Naved, I feel happy to inform you that the marriage ceremony of my elder brother has been decided to take place on the 29th of this month. The Barrett will go on the 29th and the Wallama will be held on the 30th. All the relatives and friends have been invited to attend the marriage party. I want you to be present on this occasion of happiness. I look forward to welcoming you. Pay my compliments to your father and mother. Your Sincerely, Yusuf Saeed. 